Hi, my name is Steve Houston. Welcome to my channel where I discuss all things related to financial services, the compensation plan. We compare the IMOs and the standard is where I need to supply third party documentation to back up my opinion. And as some people would say, my rhetoric, I can supply that too. The bottom line is so you can make the best decision because we live in a very confusing industry right now with a lot of recruiters out there that's recruit, recruit, recruit. Some will, so what? Some won't, whatever it is. You can get caught in that, which you do not want. You want to make a quality decision, educated decision with all the facts up front so you can start your career off on the right foot. And it's not just about the IMOs. It's also about who you partner with. Now notice I didn't say sign up with. Signing up and partnering are two very different things. I look at this thing as a partnership, meaning in order for the partnership to work, we both must be successful. It's not about recruiting a thousand people, finding two or three that'll make me rich, right? That's the American dream. You don't want that. You really want someone that's leading from the front, that can teach you the skill sets necessary to succeed in this business, step by step, case by case, day to day, throughout your whole career, but that first 90 days to six months is critical to your success. If more people did that, we would have less turnover in this business and we have a lot more agents that are finding financial freedom and success in our industry. So I challenge everybody out there to leave from the front, learn how to put your name on an application. Just my input, you can do what you want, obviously. All right, so welcome back to my channel. Again, if you're brand new to the channel, I just told you what we do here. If you're a current subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate you supporting this channel. I love your comments. Interact with me on this channel. That way I know that at least some of these videos are getting through to people and are helping people. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content of this particular video. Mass the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And hit that bell over here. Uh, because you'll get instant notifications. This is my travel season, so I plan on doing a lot of live streams as I go to Florida and various parts of the country, grab me some leads, and go write some productions. So myself and Angela both will be on the road. So uh, that way you can get instant notifications of our live streams uh, rather than wait for the emails. All right, so let's get started with today's video. So this week's video is about how to choose the right type of mortgage session and final expense coverage. So let's lay some groundwork. Understand that mortgage protection and final expense are simply terms, things that we're trying to solve, and we do that with life insurance policies. There isn't any mortgage protection policy or final expense policy. Those are issues in people's lives that they're trying to solve. Give me some coverage so that when I die, it pays off my mortgage. Give me some coverage so when I die, there's some final expense there to pay for my burial, right? And we do that with life insurance products. So today on a rare occasion, we're actually gonna go over to my whiteboard. I saw a diagram the other day on the internet and I actually duplicated or took parts of it for today's lesson that I think you'll all gain some insights from. So let's head over to my whiteboard and let's continue on with this video. Look, I can already tell without even seeing you that a lot of you get that deer in the headlights. Where is the mortgage section, Steve? Where is the final expense on that board? Well, I'm glad you asked because you're looking at it. Same goes for the mortgage section. Remember, mortgage section is a concept, not a product, as I said earlier. And the same goes for final expense. Both of these are what we're trying to solve for the client as an agent with a product that our client qualifies for based on their age, gender, and medical history. So first, let's start by talking about the four main types of life insurance products available. Then on the next video, we can decide which of the products on this board most commonly used for mortgage station and final expense solutions fit our client. So what I'm hoping is that when you complete the next two videos, and make sure you watch the second part of this, otherwise you'll miss the whole concept. Hopefully you'll have a clear understanding of these products and where to start in strategizing your own case before your next appointment. So you go in there prepared and confident. Why is this worth your time? Simple, because second only to being able to convert a lead into an appointment 
product selection is where you're all going to either succeed or fail in this business. If you can't convert a lead into an appointment, you're never going to get into the home to make a presentation. If you select the wrong product for medical issues, you're going to get your client declined and or rated, or you might miss their budget. They won't keep it and it will fall off the books creating what we call a chargeback in the business. It's important that you and I as agents, we want to look at insurance, life insurance, for the protection side of things. A lot of people we deal with when they're shopping for insurance, their concerns are, does this fit my budget? And am I going to be able to afford it? At the end of the day, they want to know that their families are taken care of in the event they are no longer living. You always want to focus on their needs and that changes based on their age, right? More responsibilities when young, married, mortgage, kids, etc. all these things that they're trying to cover that in the event if something happened to them, a lot of people will be affected and rather than passing on and leaving their dreams intact for their lives, you pass on a life of poverty handcuffing them because you didn't take the necessary steps as a provider to take care of your family while you're living and while you're passing. So we need to impart that to our client. Again, it could be life changing, whereas not so much later in life where you have less responsibilities, the kids are grown up, the mortgage is paid down, the college is taken care of, things change. I deeply believe higher death benefit when you're younger, not so much as you get older, when there's less at stake in your debt. So this is usually solved by using a term product with a high death benefit. Term insurance, which as his name says, is insurance for a term period, and then it expires and you have no coverage. Term is a great fit for young families and someone who only needs coverage for an extended period of time. This is say 10, 20, 30 years, or any duration in between. However, on the next video, we'll get into how to use these four main types of life insurance as a mortgage and final expense agent. As I said earlier, I saw this diagram in a newsletter and I loved it. I thought it was a great way to demonstrate this to you today. So what we're looking for here is rates for a male 45 good health non-smoker. So right off, as you can see, term is going to have the lowest premium of any of these four options. You get term, you get guaranteed universal life, you got whole life, and then you have indexed universal life. Again, we're taking the same age 45 male, good health, non-smoker, and you can see how all the rates and the benefits change. And as you can see, this is term product, initial death benefit $1 million, premium is $186 a month for 30 years. So it's a very low premium, very high coverage, right? The death benefit at age 85 is zero because it terms out, right? The cash value at age 85, zero because term doesn't build cash value. There are many times a lot of people outlive their coverage by living past 85, right? So it's short term solution that has many great advantages. As I said, for example, when you're young, you have the greater degree of responsibilities. I call it the law of decreasing responsibilities. You can see it in this video right here. And I recommend term as the first policy anyone puts into place for themselves before any of these other types. But you have to have long-term planning to make it work and not get caught without coverage. It is definitely not a put in place and forget solution, but it is good short-term insurance that you want to get enforced to protect your family during those young critical years. And again, I explained that concept in my video, Law of Decreasing Responsibilities, which you can watch right here. One of the options you should be showing your prospect is a convertible term option so they get cheap term in place now and they can convert it to one of these other options later. That said, let's move on to our GUL universal life product. Notice the lock, right? The lock is there because that means the death benefit has a guarantee, very important. You lock in that death benefit with a guaranteed premium and a guaranteed death benefit that will level out well past your life expectancy. A lot of agents get confused with the IUL and the GUL or the GULE. The GULE just means guaranteed universal life. E stands for express or non-medical, right? Non-medical version. The biggest difference in the GUL and the IUL is zero cash value at age 85, right? There's no cash value accumulating here, none. The amount you're paying over the cost of the insurance would normally fund an investment component of your policy 
such as an IUL, which is investing in maybe the S&P 500. This overage that you're paying will later be used to keep the premiums level and the death benefit level until age 100, and in some cases to age 100 plus. So longer coverage than a term, a higher premium, but you're locking the death benefit now, right? So again, initial death benefit, $1 million, very similar to the term, premium 749, so considerably more expensive than the term. The death benefit age 85, 1 million, right? So same death benefit, zero cash value. But again, remember the key component here is this is term, it's gonna term out, nothing available at age 85. This will be the age 100 and in some cases 100 plus. So again, coverage for your whole life. So next, let's take a look at whole life coverage, simple. This is coverage again for your whole life and you'll be paying your whole life as well. Simple way to remember it is whole life is whole life coverage and you're paying for it your whole life. The client gets protection for their whole life and as an added bonus, gets some cash value building up as well. We can get a very high death benefit if you're doing medical or fully underwritten, as you can see here, and it comes with a considerably higher premium as well. For our clients who have no retirement plan or want to add to what they have, this could be a great solution for them if they had the budget for the increased premiums. My suggestion, however, would be to put some sort of whole life coverage in place, and we'll get into that more on the next video when we're talking about mortgage session and final expense solutions, right? So let's take a look at the whole life. Again, initial death benefit, one million, premium now 1428, right? So if you look over here, you've gone from 186 for straight term coverage, to 749 for a guaranteed death benefit and a guaranteed premium, and now you're at the whole life coverage, 1 million, 1426, so it's almost double, but death benefit at age 85, 1.29 million. So again, you're in this for to fund some sort of retirement plan and to build up some cash value, 1.29 million. The cash value at 85, if you were to cash in the policy, just over $1 million. So is it worth paying almost double? Yes, right? For people that have the budget and the need to fund some sort of retirement program. I love a good whole life policy. Uh, it doesn't have to be this high. In fact, if you're gonna do fully underwritten, the face amount would be considerably lower for non-medical underwriting, but you get the coverage for your whole life and you are building some cash value. Again, it's a great example because you're gonna have some cash value for large purchases, maybe college funding for your kids, maybe a home purchase for your kids just for yourself, potentially some retirement income, and you're going to have a guaranteed death benefit on that whole life policy. Next, we have the IUL or the Index Universal Life Policy. Same coverage for comparison, $1 million of coverage, a bit higher premium, Okay, over $36,000 a year in premiums alone for a million dollar policy. But if your client wants something like that, it's important to stress that they fund it correctly by paying the target premium suggested, not the minimum premium, but the target premium or the policy would not be able to sustain itself as the cost of insurance rises over the age of your client. And it will be underfunded and cancel out, leaving them with no coverage at all at an age when it'll be very expensive to replace. So again, when you're selling that kind of product, the illustrations usually come out from the carrier. It'll say target premium, minimum premium, and people have a tendency to look at that minimum premium and pay as little as possible, and the policy will not sustain itself. And the reason why, as your client gets older, the cost of the insurance rises. So they're dipping in this little bucket of cash you built up in here to keep those premiums level throughout the entire term of that policy. I do have a video on that one, which I'll put right here and explaining how IULs work. But again, if they have a budget and fund it properly by paying the target premium, look at the death benefit at age 85. $8.75 million in cash, 9.9 .9 million as a death benefit. They're paying almost $4,000 a month premium. But again, over $9 million has accumulated in this policy. This is why you have this tree here, because it demonstrates growth and a lot of it, right? Again, cash value, nearly $9 million, $8.75 million. Now, as you can see, there are four different types of life insurance coverage, and all of them represent very different products to solve sometimes very different goals for your client. You might say, Steve, how and where do I use each one of these? 
Well, that's a great question and one that I'll get into on the next video. So be sure to subscribe, click that bell over there, and part two is all about how do we as mortgage session and final expense agents choose which one of these products is best for our clients and when to recommend these products or as we say needle or no needle or non-med versus medical exam. I like to keep it very simple. Folks, you're going to get stuck with a needle. Folks, there's no needle. They understand that. So make sure you catch the next video where I'll go into which of these life insurance solutions work best to solve the mortgage session or final expense request and why, which is very, very important. Now remember, we work in a leads-based sales opportunity. So if you're buying final expense or mortgage session leads, it's all about no exam. Again, if you're brand new to my channel, you haven't already subscribed, mash the subscribe button, hit that bell. You'll get instant notifications while I'm traveling. You'll get the live stream notifications, right? We do a lot of live streams. You're gonna wanna catch those. A lot of that is just random thoughts. And then give me a thumbs up if you like the content and make a comment. I get back to all comments that you send me within 24 hours. And remember, as I always say at the end of my video, what do I say? The surest way to succeed is to be determined never to quit. You gotta be willing to fail. You gotta be willing to be bad for you good because that's how we learn. But quitting is quitting on yourself. Go out there and learn to be a better agent. And as always, if you need my help, you're looking for a place to go, you want a good IMO with a good lead program, but more importantly, you want a systematic, great system, plug and play, step by step, case by case coaching and someone to teach you on the phone every single day, step by step, how to succeed in this business, certainly reach out to me by text, email, or phone, and let's have a conversation. Bye-bye now.